Hey, happy Memorial Day. Excuse me. I, I'm trying a different placement of my phone holder. I'm parked. I'm not driving right now. I just left an exercise class. And I know, that's what I'm always doing. I just, but I did. I just left. And I was walking out to my car. And I saw this little green thing right up under my tire. And I thought, what the heck is that? And you know what it was? It was a Luna Moth. Look, I found him. I found a little Luna Moth under my tire. I said, buddy, that's not a good place to be. You don't need to be up under there. He's still alive. Look, look at his little face. My finger's in the way. Hello. Hello. I love his fabulous antennae. Look at him. They're like little fans. He's glorious. Look at his little face. Look at his little face. He's so cute. He's like a teddy bear. <laughs> ah, I love them. You find these around here throughout the summer. Poor little guy. I said, a parking lot's not a good place for you to be. So I'm going to take him home and then let him, you know, retire to better, better environs. Get a pattern on his wings. Shut up. I can't stand that. People ride around with their damn radio going. It's disturbing my mouth. It's a little, looks like he has a little furry face. He has a face. When I was a kid, I was always bringing home every every little critter I found. I'd bring it home and I'd bring it in the house. And sometimes they'd get away from me. <laughs> Much to my mom's chagrin. Like, Mary, quit bringing that stuff in here. Quit bringing creatures in the house. <laughs> I'd bring frogs, lizards, snakes, turtles. I didn't give a shit. I'd just bring them in the house. Mama, look what I found. <laughs> I was always really proud when I caught those little wood lizards, these little gray lizards, because they are super fast. Like, pew, super fast little lizards. And if you catch one, you've really done something, because they're fast. He's blowing in the air conditioning. He's still alive. He's still alive. I, I, t I, I've been holding him like this and I took a turn in the car and he flipped over and he flipped himself back upright. I'm, but yes, I'm going to take him home and, and put him in a peaceful environment. So I do believe he's dying. They don't live, they don't live long once they come up. I believe this is one of the creatures that lives underground for a long time and then they come up and, you know, do the wild thing and then they basically die. They don't live too long. But yeah, I could be wrong about that. I'm not like a, a an entomologist or anything. But I do believe that's the life cycle of the Luna Moth. They don't live like this very long. Um, and ant lines are the same way. You still like to catch ant lines. When they make their little trap, you take a little stick. I would take like a piece of a pine needle and make them think an ant was coming in. And they'd grab it. And then I'd grab their little pinchers and pull them up out of the thing. I didn't hurt them. I put them back down in there. I just wanted to see what they look like. You know, ant lions have no, they have no asshole. They don't have a, they don't have a butt. They don't have a rectum. They don't, they can't do anything. No, no, no asshole. <laughs> I loved catching all the baby frogs down at the pond. And I loved getting dirty and just going out and playing in the mud and catching things. I still do. So this was cool. This is the first one of these I've seen this year. First one. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I like the coloring on them. is so pretty. And down here on these wings, they have little dots on these wings as well. See, they look like eyes. They evolved these dots to scare off predators because they do kind of look like eyes. It's a nice little defense mechanism. A lot of creatures have, you know, fake eyes on their backs or on, on them somewhere, on their wings to confuse predators or at least, you know, keep them away. So, yes, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. It's the first one I've seen. He seems pretty content. But I'm going to make sure he's far away from Wally. Don't give me the stink eye. You're the one who took up two parking spaces. Come walking out here looking at me. This big-ass truck over here took up two parking spaces for no damn reason. He could have fit in one, but he decided to just shimmy on in right in the middle of two of them because he's just Billy Badass. He walked out with his little bag from the Dollar Tree looking at me like I'm something. Get the hell on. Anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you my mouth. Isn't he pretty? I don't have my mom here to freak her out. 
She hated it when I brought stuff in the house. But look at it. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're having a good day. I'm having a good day. I wanted to say one more thing about ex-husbands. Um, I want to say that the timing for meeting Glenda the Good Witch for me was perfect because he doesn't treat me like shit. He's a nice person. And I think, honestly, if I had met him sooner, I would have thought he was boring. And that was another thing I learned in therapy was you grew up in a chaotic home with lots of dysfunction on numerous levels. So to you, a nice person may, may seem boring to you because there's no, there's no chaos, there's no drama. There's, you know what I mean? It's not boring, this is normal. You know, normal life should not look like this. So, you know, they may seem boring, but give them a chance. And he didn't seem boring. I'm just saying, if I had met him in a different pre period of time in my life, he might have. Because I was, I guess I was kind of attracted to bad boys, you know. And two, when you marry somebody, you're really taking a chance. Because I will say that for one of my marriages, well, for two of my marriages, after they said I do, everything kind of changed. It was like, oh, good, I don't have to hold up that mask anymore. Okay, cool. So we're married, so now here's how I really am. Blech! And it's like, oh, Jesus. Okay, that I didn't know. Didn't realize you were... Didn't realize that about you. You don't really know somebody until you've been with them for a while. You really don't. They can hold up a mask for a long time. And that was the case with a couple of my marriages where after we got married, they it's like they were a different person than they were before. So you, you really never know. And I know I'm not the only one that's had that experience. I, I used to work with a lady who told me um, she got married young and uh, she was an older lady. She got married young and she said one day she came home and the, the, they were living in an apartment together. He had cleaned all of his stuff out of the apartment, left her a note, and it just said, I don't love you anymore. I don't know that I ever did. I'm leaving you goodbye. And he was just gone. She had no idea he was unhappy. They had been married for several years. Had no idea that he was planning on leaving her. He just left one day while she was at work. Just She just came home to a note. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving you. Um, I don't love you. I don't know that I ever did. Goodbye. And that was it. You know, that could happen to anybody. You just you just never know. You never know. You're, you're taking a chance when you say I do. You really are. You know, just... I don't know. If, you, if your gut is telling you something's off about somebody, whether, whether it's a partner or, or not, pay attention to that. Because my, my gut told me that for two of the three. Like, oh, something's off. Something's not right. And I just thought it was wedding chitters, but now looking back, I don't know that it was. But yeah, anyway, I'm happy now. I am. I, I describe myself as happily divorced. I am happily divorced. I am not eager to get married again. A lot of people seem to think, you know, oh, if I could only find the perfect man, the perfect woman, the perfect whatever, I would be happy. No, no, if you're not happy now with yourself, finding somebody is not going to fix that you know and getting married is not always the answer getting into a relationship is not always the answer it's not necessarily going to make anything better for you you got and i know it's such a cliche but it's true you got to be happy with yourself before you're ever going to be happy with somebody else and for many years i was not happy with myself and i picked people who were not very good they just were not good people. And um, I spent a lot of years and a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort learning that lesson. It was a very expensive lesson to learn. But, hell, some people never learn it. So, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, better late than never. But, yeah, don't worry about it if you're not in a relationship. It's fine. You can be happy and not be in a relationship. And if you're not happy... Going out and finding somebody may not change that. It probably won't. It may just add a whole other level of misery to your life that you didn't have before. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to dissuade you from it, but 
just take your time. There's no rush. Don't, if somebody, especially if somebody's trying to rush you into something, big red flag, don't. If they're trying to hurry this relationship along, uh, huge red flag. No. So love yourself. Have a good day. You know, live like this little fella right here. Live for the moment sometimes. You got to plan for the future, but you got to, you got to enjoy today as well. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great Memorial Day. And if you're not in the USA, I hope you have a great Monday. And I'm going to go home and get some work done. And I will see you later.